Okay, happy uh, Monday. Welcome back everybody uh, for another Monday Maths Challenge. Okay, with me, Mr. Obiawe, hooray. Okay, so um, today we're gonna be working on area and perimeter. So please make sure that you have got your resources ready. You need a ruler, you need a pencil, probably need a rubber and uh, some paper on which to draw uh, certain things. Um, squared paper is best. If you haven't got squared paper, then I will post a link uh, somewhere on the, on the website, uh, on our class blog, so that you can maybe use it online. Uh, use some online uh, resource to make shapes if you need to. Right, uh, so we're going to go through some vocabulary first of all because there are a few things that uh, hopefully later on will be made clear. Uh, so rectilinear, I mean we should know this already but it is one of those words that you only ever use when doing this so I'll forgive you if you've forgotten. Um, so basically these are shapes which are made out of right angles, so lines and right angles. Uh, so a square, a rectangle are rectilinear shapes but then so are some L shapes where you've got the right angles uh, or where lines meet perpendicularly. Okay, a factor. Now it might seem strange that we're using a factor in here and also a multiple, but uh, because of the activity later on, you will need to remember what they are. Uh, so factor are numbers which um, multiply together to make your target number. So for instance, uh, two and six are both factors of 12. Um, there are also uh, factors of other numbers, but um, yeah, there you go. Multiples, and it's basically a times table. So 12 is a multiple of 2. It's also a multiple of 6. Um, it's a multiple of 1. It's also a multiple of 12. Okay, and correlation. Now, you may not have heard this word before, but this is basically a link um, where one thing links to another, and if one side goes up, then the other side will go up, or um, one side goes down, then the other side will go down. Okay, so, oh, let's have a look here. What can you tell me about these two shapes? Take some time to pause, have a look at it, and uh, just jot down a couple of, or three things uh, that you notice. What is the same and what is it different? between these two shapes. It should be fairly simple, starting off quite easily at the moment. And what's the distance around each of these shapes? So remember when we're counting, um, when we're counting uh, or, or doing perimeter, especially if we're going to count squares, I'll just get my pointer out, my laser pen. Uh, it would be, maybe we would start at the top left hand corner and then just count all the jumps going around and this one and this one would still be counted okay this is for perimeter only though so we're not going to count it we can just oh there we go all the way around and then that would be how many how what the perimeter is around this one and then looking at this one there we go let's get the laser pointer off uh, and finally uh, I want you to list the three most important things that you have noticed about uh, these shapes. Okay. Okay, right, let's move on. Uh, so we've got a few more of these shapes. You might recognize uh, a couple of them. Let me just get my laser pointer out again. I quite like that feature. We've got this one and this one. Okay, so the other shapes. I would like you to match them up or pair them up or um, see which ones are, can be linked with others. Um, so not only for the perimeter, but also for the area as well. So take some time, pause the video, uh, see how these match up. So, um, 
can you match these up? Can you pair them up or put them into groups where they're of similar types? Uh, I'm not going to give you the answers here, but I'm just going to ask the question so that you can have a think about it. Um, and if you have found any that sort of can go together, how do the variations change the perimeter and the area of the shape? So for instance, we saw these two previously, this rectangle and this rectangle, and we said, oh wow, they're fairly similar, but there's a slight variation, and uh, that means there's a difference in the area and a difference in the perimeter. And the final question I want you to think about really is what correlations, what links are there between area and perimeter? Or are there any correlations between area and perimeter? Or are they totally independent? Or are they totally dependent? Or is it a kind of sometimes? Or is it it depends? Okay, have a think about that. So pause the video and uh, I'll speak to you soon. Area, area, and perimeter. Okay, things to remember when we're working this out. If you have forgotten, uh, perimeter of a rectangle uh, can be calculated in a number of different ways, but I've put it down here as P equals, or P, which is perimeter, equals 2 times A plus 2 times B. A being one uh, set of opposite sides and B being another set of opposite sides. Okay, so the parallel sides, parallel sides A and parallel sides B, you add those together to get your perimeter. Okay. And the area of a rectangle, I put here as A equals LW. L, so A being the area, sorry, L being the length, and W being the width. Now, I have no symbol between these two letters here, but we know that that means they multiply together. Okay, so you multiply the length times the width to get your area. Okay, right. Uh, so I've got a series of questions and I want you to pause the video when necessary and work through these step by step. They're going to get progressively trickier and I think, well, I had a lot of fun when I did it myself. Um, and hopefully you will as well. So first of all, can you draw some shapes that have the same area but different perimeters? Okay, so you want to keep the area the same uh, and then manipulate it so that the perimeters change. Okay, can you draw some shapes that have the same perimeter but different areas? I'm not sure if that's easier or different or hard, but have a go at that. Pause the video again and have a go. So, right, bring on for the next set of questions. I'd like you to choose a rectilinear shape. It's probably best if you just start with a rectangle. Um, or a square if you really want to. Okay, and what we asked to do is to make the area of your shape go up, but the perimeter go down. Is it possible? Can you do that? Take a bit of time, draw it out, have a bit of trial and error, see how the patterns start to move and see if that's actually possible. And then I'd like you to do the opposite. Back to your original shape. Can you make the perimeter of your shape go up this time, but the area go down? Okay, is it possible? You see how you can do it. Remember those shapes at the beginning with sort of some blocks taken out or things shifted here or there? Is that a possibility to use something like that? Okay, uh, if you're gonna keep your shape as a rectangle and not have uh, other like L shapes or T shapes or things like that. Uh, a little tip is that the longer the shape is, if you've got the same area, the longer the shape is, uh, the smaller the perimeter will be. Okay, next set of questions. I mean, I can't contain how much fun I'm having. I'm sure you're having equally as much fun as me with this. Can you draw a shape in which the perimeter is numerically twice the area. Okay, so this is where we're getting to that really, really good stuff. And also with this, can you draw a shape in which the area is numerically twice the perimeter? Okay, now uh, 
This is um, a bit of a doozy. It requires some trial and error, testing things out, convincing yourself of a pattern, um, being systematic as well. Okay, so have a go at that. Pause the video as you need. Get some help if you want to talk to somebody who's available to talk to. Um, with this, I've got a bit of a tip. You will need to think very carefully and clearly about what is needed to find the area of a rectangle and how that might be used in this activity. Okay, so the hint here is factors. Okay, so factors. The uh, four along the bottom, along the width, and the six along the length, um, these are both factors of 24. And if I know my formula for my perimeter, I can see if there is a link between that and uh, the, these factors that I've found and the perimeter overall. Okay, and then, oh, finally, this is like the super challenge, uber challenge even. Um, can you draw a shape or even two shapes in which the area is numerically equal to its perimeter? And another, so two shapes where the area and the perimeter are exactly the same. Okay, well, that's all for me today. I really, really hope you've enjoyed this uh, Monday's Maths Challenge and your brains are now buzzing and fizzing with all this amazing knowledge and uh, mathematical prowess. We shall speak to you soon. Take care. Bye now.